Hello, my friends. This podcast will be a year-end review of 2017. Unlike last year, that had some online drama, this year was relatively drama-free for me. I did witness the drama surrounding other occultists, and it was quite exhausting. I'm happy that that was eventually resolved. This was quite a year for me. So much has transpired. I made some amazing friends from my Facebook, some I have actually met in person. It helps that they live in New York. I am grateful for that. I won't mention names, but if they want to reveal themselves, they certainly can. There are those whom I have not yet met in person, but have become friends with online and who actually have my number. I look forward to speaking and getting to know more of you this year. This year, for me, is the year of transparency and connection, and I will be pursuing this very hard. Let's take a look back at uh, some of the highlights from this year. In January, I released Circe's Wand. This was a book I took immense joy in writing. I've worked with Circe many times, and I'm happy to hear that others have had great success working with her through my book. In March, I released Rabbi Isaac Luria, The Lion of the Kabbalah, as part of my Jewish mystic series. This rabbi has, and still has, quite an impact on my work in the Kabbalah. I'm happy to see that so many have enjoyed this book. In April, I released The Watchers and Their Ways, one of my most important books of the year. Not many books have been written on The Watchers that lays the history and magic side by side. I was inspired to write this by my friend James Hunter Ralston. He was a great inspiration for this book, and he mentioned this idea to me, and I ran with it. Thank you, James, because of your emails, this important work was made real. It was this month that I went to Sedona and fell in love with the spirit that lives there. I'm looking to buy a house there in the near future. I loved it so much. After the Watcher's book, I got a bit more niche. I never write for the money. It's not my thing. I write out of passion, and the books that follow were truly indicative of this. In May, I released my first installment in the Baal on Buddhism series called Dependent Origination for the Layman. In this series, I discuss rather complex topics that exist in Buddhism and try to make them more approachable. July This was a tough month for me, I have to admit. I was mostly away from the city and in nature where I have a country home. I was bitten by a tick. I was not the only one, and so I thought, well, it was nothing. Little did I know what was to come. The following week, I went to the gravesite of Peter Steele, the lead of Typo Negative, one of my favorite bands. I needed closure. His death in 2010 was not good for me, and I needed to process it. A day or two later, I met with J.P. Sears, the hilariously funny and enlightened YouTube sensation. During this time, something was brewing in me. I recall a moment while at J.P. Sears' event that I had this brief moment of vertigo, but thought nothing of it. Two days later, I was trembling. I was a trembling mess in my bed with 104 fever. I had no idea what was happening. I thought initially it was the flu, but I knew deep down this was no flu and I needed help and I needed it fast. There were plenty of hospitals on the Upper West Side where I live, but I decided to go cross town to the east side to Lenox Hill Hospital. I knew they had a good reputation. I entered the ER in a fog. I was trembling and sweating profusely. I run hot as it is, but this was unusual. My shirt was heavy with sweat. They placed me on a bed and put me into the R, and they did all these tests on me and found that I was in full sepsis. They looked at my blood work, and they didn't know what to make of it. I took a look myself. I was able to read it since after high school I was going to uh, be a 
go through the medical route, so I sort of studied a lot of this in depth. I was, after all, a nerd, and I still am. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, my blood work looked like it was carpet bombed. Every organ looked like it was on the verge of failure. Someone so very dear to me came to the hospital and was there by my side, and they reminded me of the time I had in nature recently. And it was at that point the doctors had a collective wave of, oh shit, we know exactly what this is. They realized then I was suffering from a tick-borne illness. Suffice it to say, they were right, and the rest of the summer I was in recovery. I was actually in the hospital for about a week. Despite that, I was able to release my book, Asherah, The Queen of Heaven. I've received over a dozen emails from readers of this book, and I'm happy I was able to bring her back. On a side note, some have told me that they thought that during this time that I was sick was because my quote-unquote competitors wished me ill. It's funny because it is those competitors who some people thought I was part of, which I'm not, and I've made it very clear that I'm not. So it was sort of ironic that people were like, oh, you're part of this group, right? And I'm like, no, I've never been. But they, but people thought, well, I was actually cursed by them. But now I am better than ever, and I have taken protective measures just in case it was, in fact, a curse. And if I was cursed by them, they can suck it. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. In September, I released the book Durga Mantra Magic. This book was one of my favorites to write since I have worked with her for over a year straight. I mean, every day. Although it didn't gain wide acclaim, it has been very helpful to many who have emailed me. In the same month, I released The Path of the Pendulum. This was a smash hit. I use Pendulum all the time and notice that so many people do. I mean, more than I thought. And I wanted to share my approach with the world, and I'm glad I did. So many have emailed me telling me that, that my approach was the missing link for them, and I'm very grateful for that. In October, I released a very niche book about the Jewish oral tradition, the Talmud, and a cultist introduction. This, too, was inspired by James Hunter Ralston. I knew it would be very niche, but it was a passion project, and I knew it was something that needed to be written and I'm happy that I did. It was it was a little tough. I mean, the Talmud is a tough topic, but it was very interesting, and I actually enjoyed it very much. Then finally in November, I wrote the second installment of the Balan Buddhism series called Cho Practice Demystified. This, too, was a passion project. I did not expect it to gain traction. I simply wanted to reveal to the world that this Buddhist practice does not have to be so complicated. There was a lot more to tell about this year besides my work. I had an amazing birthday meal at Del Posto that I had posted the other day. Uh, it was the best meal I ever had. I was overcome with emotions. I never had that during any meal in my life. I always thought that the high-end chefs, when they mentioned, you know, food is exquisite and sublime, I always thought that was sort of just, you know, so pretentious. I realized that, in fact, it is not pretension but is so true. Uh, I've had great food before, but this was truly a spiritual experience. Other significant news from this year were involved art. I have commissioned some amazing artwork from Dipti Lamba. Two from this year and one that will come in the next few days, and I will showcase that when it comes in. She created this amazing Tara painting. It is above my altar, and when I look upon it, I know Tara is with me. I mean, it's, it's, it's moving. She also created a second piece, the v Venus of Willendorf. She prominently hangs in my living room. She fits perfectly with the rest of the art that is there. I walk into my living room and I'm in awe of the goddess. Thank you, Dipti, for the great pieces. And I can't wait to showcase the one that's coming in the next day or two. And hopefully we can work together for many, many more. I'm sort of running out of wall space, but I think I can find some more room for you because I want your work. You have great, great work. In the end, the biggest development this year was my unveiling of my true voice, the one that you're hearing right now. This was big for me. 
And I know many people have told me not to do it, but you know what? I'm going to do it. I know that other groups and other authors, they want to stay behind a veil, and that's fine if it works for them. But And I thought it worked for me too, uh, but then I realized uh, speaking to so many of you and making real connections, I, I, can't, I can't maintain that for very long. I felt that you're so real with me, telling me your problems and your life and your joys and your pains and I owe it to you to be as transparent as you are it doesn't lessen my work in fact it enhances it and this year is about connection as I said and that connection is going to be made with many of you if not all of you you stay tuned for that the other groups they want to stay veiled because it enhances their mystery go right ahead but that's not what I'm going to do Anyway, <laughs> in 2018, I will release finally all the courses that I've been promising you for the last two years. Uh, it's actually been quite difficult, uh, more, uh, far more difficult than I expected. Uh, but until then, in the next few weeks, I will release uh, two books, one called uh, Pazuzu Rising, which is one of my favorites. It's uh, many of you know who Pazuzu is. Uh, actually, the movie The Exorcist made him very famous. But I think you'll really like this book. And a book on Baal magic, which will be the second installment in the Canaanite magic uh, series that I have, which I think you'll really love. And I have many books planned for this year, including the Yazidi and many mantra works as well. There you have it, my friends, a year full of stuff. <laughs> I know that 2018 will be a good year, and I pray and wish that you will have a wonderful and prosperous new year. If there is anything I can do for you, please let me know. Until then, blessings to you and to those you love. You are all in my thoughts. Baal Kadmon. <laughs>